If you've ever spent any amount of time training jujitsu, you'll know that there's absolutely nothing more scary than gassing out and feeling like you're powerless on the mats. You feel your jujitsu melt away from you. And despite your best efforts, somebody who is technically less skilled than you will probably be able to beat you. This scary experience will usually lead people to attempt to build their cardio off the mats. And as you do this endless cardio, something that you end up realizing pretty quickly is that it doesn't translate to the mats in the way that you want it to. This leads a lot of people to say that cardio for jujitsu is different than cardio for other activities. Is this true? Let's check it out. So before we get into the topic of this video, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Alex Sterner and I'm a strength and conditioning coach based out of San Diego, California. Here at my gym, Electrum Performance, we work with lots of jujitsu practitioners, people ranging all the way from hobbyists who just want to feel a little bit better on the mats all the way up to multiple time black belt world champions. And we've worked with a high volume of jujitsu athletes for a long time. Suffice it to say, we've pretty much seen it all in terms of helping people prepare for jujitsu and solving the problems that they experience on the mats. Furthermore, both myself and my coaches have trained jujitsu for a very long time. Myself, I started training way back in 2004. So I've seen a lot in terms of how the sport has changed already and how it's still a bit lagging behind other sports in the realm of strength and conditioning and general preparation. So having trained myself for a very long time and worked with a full spectrum of practitioners, I can confidently explain why this problem is so complex and why your attempts at improving your cardio may not be translating to your experience on the mats. First, let's break down what traditional cardio is made up of. Our body utilizes three energy systems to produce ATP, and cardio is going to be made up of the last two energy systems, either the glycolytic or aerobic energy systems. So as it relates to performing cardio, glycolytic type activities might be really intense intervals that are short with slightly longer rest periods. And something that's more aerobic in nature would be long duration steady state cardio. While those are definitely important, they do not make up the entirety of what we experience in terms of conditioning on the mats. So let's look at some of those other factors that may lead to us feeling gassed out as we train jujitsu. In terms of physiology, there's actually a good amount of strength involved in a combat sport and how we may feel like we're gassing out. One of those areas of strength is absolute strength, how much total load you can move. Let's say, for example, it takes about 80% of your total strength to off balance an opponent. How many times could we realistically chain that off balance together to finally complete that sweep before we gas out? The answer is not that many times. Now, if we take that same scenario, but it only requires about 20% of your total strength to do an off balance, you can chain that together many more times before you feel yourself really starting to tire. This isn't something that people look at all that much, but it's super, super important. The next realm of strength that plays into our conditioning is relative strength, or the force that we can produce relative to our body weight. If we can produce a lot of force relative to our body weight, we can much more easily move our body through space without feeling overly exerted. The same holds true as we spar with somebody in our weight class or somebody similar to our weight. We can move around their body weight much more easily and at a lower effort level if we're stronger. The last type of strength I would want to look at is local muscular endurance or your muscle's ability to sustain contractions over time. We could look at a lot of different muscles as it relates to this quality, but something like the grip is perhaps the most obvious. If you can't maintain your grips over the course of a fight, you may find the rest of your body working harder to make up for that. You can't maintain those four points of contact your legs may have to pummel way more to try to retain guard simply because you're not able to hold something like a pant grip to prevent that person from moving. So outside of that traditional cardio, those two energy systems I already talked about, we have absolute strength, relative strength, and local muscular endurance that all play a very important role in terms of our exertion or how conditioned we feel on the mats. What's kind of crazy is it doesn't end there there's also some psychological factors as it relates to our conditioning. One of them is extremely obvious. And if you've ever competed, if you can think back to the first time you competed, or maybe even one of the first times that you went and trained jujitsu, this factor probably reared its head. And that is anxiety. If you're anxious and in a very heightened state, you're very likely to overexert on even the smallest movements. Something like making a simple grip where 
in a relaxed setting, you might only put a fraction of your strength into quickly becomes a death grip because of that heightened state. And this doesn't just apply to our grips. Every single transition and movement that we make will be at a much higher effort level than we're used to. And that will drive up an oxygen debt and lead us to gassing out much, much more rapidly. This other psychological factor isn't nearly as obvious, but it's a fundamental element of jujitsu. And that is something that I like to call fight economy. Fight economy is essentially maximizing an output while minimizing your input. And this couldn't be more clearly demonstrated than a hypothetical scenario where a black belt rolls with a white belt. If I asked anybody who's trained for any amount of time, we have a black belt and a white belt rolling together. We know nothing about either individual. If I ask you who's working harder, most people without hesitating will say the white belt. And that's because when we're less experienced at jujitsu, we overexert all the time. We don't really know what we're doing, but we're struggling really, really hard. A black belt, on the other hand, is wasting absolutely no energy. And if they could get away with 20 or 10% of their strength leading to an off balance or a sweep or some sort of transition, they'll do that. They won't over apply that force and apply 80% of their max strength when they only need to utilize 10 or 20%. And fight economy really does a good job of multiplying or enhancing different physiological factors, things like strength that utilizes leverage and technique to do so, but also elements of conditioning. If you're constantly monitoring your input and really keeping your input as low as possible, you may feel more conditioned than someone who has much more developed energy systems because your movement is more efficient. So when we look at all of these things together and working at the same time, that is what plays into our subjective experience of conditioning. And it usually requires a ton of these things being out of whack for us to feel like we're gassing out. So at this point, you might be thinking, cool, you explained why it's so complicated and frustrating, but what do I do with that? Let me break it down into a couple steps and then we'll work from there. First things first, you have to assess why you're gassing out if you are. Later in the video, I'm gonna go through a couple assessments as it relates to cardio, as it relates to those two energy systems that I talked about earlier. But you might have a pretty good idea if you're not doing any sort of strength training, one of those elements or all of those elements of strength may be playing a big role in terms of your conditioning. And it's the elephant in the room, but if your jujitsu technique is not all that good, you're probably not gonna have great fight economy. So focusing on relaxing as you roll, and more importantly, relaxing as you drill will be key for this. When you're drilling, if you're putting a ton of effort into it, you're not practicing having good fight economy and really maximizing your output while minimizing your input. We want drilling to be as efficient as possible and make sure that we're using the technique and the leverage, but also that we're managing our energy in a way that is sustainable in a live sparring or combat scenario. So when in doubt, train more jujitsu. But let's say for the sake of this example, that you are certain that it is your cardio. Maybe you had an injury that kept you off the mats and jujitsu is the majority of the cardio that you normally do. I'm gonna go over some protocols, about two for each energy system that will allow you to train that weak point specifically and improve it. And last, if it's not your cardio, maybe it's one of those elements of strength or it's some combination of those physical traits, you should check out Team EP, our subscription service that gives you programming for a dollar a day. This programming each month goes through a specific focus. And let's say your absolute strength is a little bit off. We have months that focus on maximal strength and you can work on building up that weak point so it's not holding back your jujitsu anymore. And all of this occurs within an injury prevention context. The most important ability is always availability. So all of our programs focus on covering all of your bases in terms of resilience and making your body more robust and less prone to injury. This will allow you to train more jujitsu. Whether your problem is conditioning or any other issue with jujitsu, keeping you on the mat so you can train will allow you to become the best version of yourself and the best fighter that you could possibly be. So check out Team EP. There will be a seven day free trial link below. Okay, so if you do suspect that your cardio is a little bit lacking, we wanna really identify that this is the case through some sort of assessment. So the first of two assessments that I'm going to give you takes place on the rowing ergometer. So if you have access to one of these, all you're gonna do for this test is row a thousand meters as fast as you can. 
Now, in the description, I'm going to link some standards for males and females. Know that this does scale a bit with height and with body weight, so it's not perfect. But using this test, if we fall way outside of those standards, there's a good chance that we need to work on either our aerobic or glycolytic energy systems. In particular, if your time slopes off a ton after the first half, right, you could sort of uh, take a split at 500 meters and then again, your time at 1,000. If it takes you 50% longer to do that second half, you definitely need to address your aerobic energy system more so than the glycolytic. If you're able to keep it pretty constant between the first and second half, there's probably a bit more we can get out of doing some glycolytic intervals. And we'll get into some of those in just a minute. First, let's look at our second assessment if you don't have access to a rower. So assessment number two is doing 100 calories on an assault bike. Again, I'm gonna have different scores for men and women listed in the description. And it's also worth noting that assault bikes will count calories a little bit differently than things like Aerodynes or Schwinn bikes. It's not that those can't be used, but the times may not scale perfectly with the ones that I have listed. Again, if we fall outside of the total range, we may have to work on both energy systems. And if you notice a significant discrepancy or none at all between the first and second half of this one, in this case, the first 50 calories and the next 50 calories, then that may give an indication as to which energy system you need to focus on. Much like the rower, this one is influenced by body weight, but not so much on height. So let's go over a specific protocol if we want to focus on our glycolytic energy system. The glycolytic energy system is going to apply to very intense bursts on the mats, followed by you know, more static positions or pseudo rest periods. By training this energy system, we can get more bursts or potentially have those bursts be slightly longer in duration. To train this energy system, we can use any piece of aerobic equipment. It could be something like an assault bike, or a ski erg, or a rower, really anything that you have at your disposal. We could even use something like a treadmill on a little bit of an incline. What we wanna do here is focus on very intense bouts and then actually have a longer period of total or active rest. For this protocol, we're gonna do 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. So that's a one to two work to rest ratio. And we're gonna do that for two sets of three reps. So on something like the assault bike, we're gonna have a timer running. And at the top of each minute, you're going to sprint hard for 20 seconds. When you get to 20 seconds, you're either gonna do a very light recovery pace of active rest, or put your feet up and rest entirely for the 40 seconds until it gets to a minute. At a minute, you'll repeat that intense bout for 20 seconds and rest again for 40. A set of three means you'll repeat that three times in a row. And just like any set of a strength training movement, in between sets, you're going to rest entirely. Let that heart rate work its way all the way back you know, towards resting, usually about two or three minutes at least, and then go ahead and do that again. Something that I can't stress enough is that if we're focusing on the glycolytic system, we want to make sure that the sprint intervals are very intense. Let's check out that second protocol. So if you don't have access to any sort of aerobic equipment, that's just fine. I'm gonna give you a protocol that you can follow and all you'll need is a relatively steep hill. What you're gonna do are series of hill sprints. You're going to sprint up the hill for about 15 seconds and then walk back down. Usually it'll take you about three times as long to walk down if you are sprinting up. So essentially we now have a work to rest ratio of one to three. This one is going to be active rest, right? We have to walk our way back down so you won't be able to rest entirely, which is why we're gonna have a little bit more of it. Really try to keep those uh, sprint intervals as intense as you can. Walk down nice and slow so you have more time to rest than the actual bouts of sprinting. You're gonna do this for three sets of four reps. So it'll be four sprints up with the corresponding walk back down. Between sets, again, we want to allow for more complete rest. You can do this protocol or the first one in a relatively short amount of time, but it should be very intense such that it still feels taxing by the time you've finished. Okay, let's go over our first protocol for the aerobic energy system. Now in general, the aerobic energy system is going to allow us to recover better between our bouts of exercise or between our rounds at class. So this is a very important energy system to train. The first protocol is one that we're all probably familiar with. 
It's called low intensity, steady state cardio. Essentially, you're gonna do something at zone two or three, if you're familiar. If you're not familiar with that, something at an RPE or rate of perceived exertion at about a five out of 10. You do something like a treadmill, you could go outside for you know a brisk walk even. And what we're gonna do is maintain an elevated heart rate for at least 30 minutes. You don't need to kill yourself here. And if you have time, if you don't get bored, we want to extend that duration, even upwards of an hour. This is one of the least fatiguing forms of cardio. If we don't empty the clip, keep the intensity low and go for long duration. So I would suggest putting on a podcast, listening to some good music and sort of just getting lost in that motion. This is a very good way for us to build the aerobic energy system, which should translate to success on the mats. So the last protocol that I want to go over are some intervals that remain within the aerobic energy system. These intervals are going to be 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and we can use something like a ski erg or a rower or again, really any piece of equipment. What's far more important than the piece of equipment is how long this activity lasts and at what effort level. Now, unlike the low intensity steady state cardio, what we're going to be looking to do here is on these 30 second intervals, because we have 30 seconds off, we're gonna have a slightly higher effort level, about a six or a seven out of 10. You can probably handle a little bit higher of an effort level, but we wouldn't be able to do nearly as many reps or we would slope off very hard. So keep it dialed in, shoot for about a six or a seven out of 10. And when you're just starting off, you're gonna do 15 reps of this. So that'll take about 15 minutes, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 15 rounds will be 15 minutes. You can do this for 30, even 40 or 45 minutes. What we really wanna focus on here is a slightly higher effort level than the low intensity steady state. And we want to maintain that effort level throughout the duration of the number of reps that we're doing. So I hope this video helped. I hope it gave you a chance to really assess where your problem might be because nobody likes gassing out in jujitsu. We also have some protocols that we should be able to use regardless of what pieces of equipment we have available. When it boils down to it, it's important to do some sort of prep for jujitsu off the mats. It'll really enhance the time that we do spend on the mats. And if you're training appropriately, you're following these protocols or something like we have in Team EP, whether that's for your strength or your conditioning, it shouldn't compete with your time on the mats. It should only complement it. It should keep you injury free, should allow you to not gas out and have much more quality sessions when you are on the mats and spend less time sitting out even though you're spending the same amount of time going to class. This type of prep is important. And if you like this stuff, if you like these ideas, feel free to subscribe and I will continue to deliver so that you can spend less time injured and sidelined and more time training jujitsu. Happy training, subscribe, do all those things, whatever.